Hi, I'm Ashley from Clever Touch, and I'm about to take you through a demonstration of our Clever Touch UX Pro interactive touchscreen. Should you require further information, you can send us an email, info at clevertouch.com. Alternatively, you can check out further details on our website, which is www.clevertouch.com. Let's talk about the hardware itself. The one I'm working on today and the one I'm going to be running the demonstration on is a 55 inch UX Pro. We have a variety of other sizes from a 65 inch, a 75 inch and an 86 inch screen as well. Built into the screen, you'll have a built in array mic at the top of the screen here. You've also got two 15 watt speakers as well as a 15 watt subwoofer. And in the bottom right hand corner, you've got an NFC card reader and a built in presence detection sensor as well. You've also got a number of inputs in the screen, including three HDMI inputs. You've got a HDMI out. You've also got a display port and you've got uh, two USB-C ports as well. The first allowing you to run audio, visual and touch and the second running audio, visual touch as well as power. So for those of you that are using Google Chromebooks, very simple to plug straight in. And for those of you that have got laptops with USB-C inputs, it's a very straightforward one cable installation. The screens themselves come with a full five year on site deinstall reinstall warranty, and we've also got the lowest failure rate in the market space coming in at less than 0.4%. The screens themselves also have a full OPS slot, offering you the opportunity to run your own PC base in there should you want to. So, if you're a HP house or um, a Dell house, for example, the ability to run the screen in dual mode, whether that be in an Android mode, as we'll be taking you through in a moment, or PC mode, so that you've got a full Windows capability running. Um, an interactive display as well. I'm now going to take you through the functionality of the Clever Touch UX Pro. I'm running this through Zoom, uh, but again, you can manage that however you see appropriate. We would always recommend, if you're running a video conference, however, that you'd be running that through your PC or your laptop direct. But if I'm sharing my Clever Touch screen, then Zoom works really well at that point. So first things first, let's come to my um, uh, screen and I'll share that screen for you directly. So you'd now be seeing um, my Clever Touch screen directly here as you see it. Now, the principle and the idea behind the UX Pro is that it's about that walk up and use capability. So whether you're in a meeting room, a training room, a boardroom, it's got to be easy enough to walk up and use for anybody um, that's not familiar with this type of, of setup. Uh, and again, in meeting spaces and in uh, a variety of training rooms, you may find that those users maybe use the rooms for one or two hours um, a week. So that capability of having something that's very simple to walk up and use is very, very important. You can rename your screens very quickly. So if I tap the Clever Touch five times and hit input string, then I can change my name of my screen very, very easily here. So this, for example, might be um, a meeting room. So we'll just change this to show meeting room. But again, you can name that whatever you feel appropriate at that point in time. Let's take you through our three functional buttons that we've got here. And again, this is really about information and about allowing you to see the screen in as much use as possible. So the status tells you about your date, the time, it tells you whether you're connected to the internet. The second tab is connect. This shows you what connectivity options that you've got at this point. Um, and again, you can see here a variety of HDMI along with uh, USB-C, VGA and display ports as well. And you can manage this to show more or less depending on how you want to manage your inputs at this point. The majority of the time though, most people will be in the uh, present mode. So this is giving the, the ability to use whiteboarding, any files that I might have. So your traditional Microsoft Office files, as well as uh, getting access to your browser as well. We've also got built in digital signage. So this is using Clever Message, which is part of our Clever Touch ecosystem and part of the Sodeo Live solution that offers uh, businesses the capability to run digital signage, meeting room solutions, as well as digital signage running straight through our screens. And should you require any more information on that, you've got our contact details um, at the bottom of the screen, should you want to have a bit more information running through. Okay, let's um, take you through some of the functionality then. So the first thing that we'll have a look at is our whiteboarding. Whiteboarding gives me the ability to load and save existing files. So very simply, I can either load and save 
files that I've created already. Great in those situations where traditionally, if you've got a dry erase board or a flip chart environment, where you might have confidential information on those that you don't want other people to see, you either got to take those flip charts away or put a sheet of paper over your dry erase board. Here, it gives me the ability to um, create the files, save them directly to the screen, to my USB stick, or in this case, I could save it as a PDF file or as an image file directly to my cloud drive. And again, with cloud drive access, you've got the ability to save that directly into um, a Google Drive or a OneDrive. So there's a variety of ways in which you can save your resources and open those up at a different time should you require. You can change your backgrounds very simply by clicking on the background color. And again, if I want to add different types of backgrounds, so I've got the ability to add in um, line paper, squared paper, music paper, if you wish. Um, and it's very simply just to add additional pages should you want to. So again, I can click on my pages and I can see all of those available. And I can change each color page very simply from here. So again, depending on what I'm wanting to use, I can change my pages nice and simply. And again, into page three. I can even, if I want to, add individual forms at this point as well. So if I've got a form that I want to use, then I can very simply add that form in here. So again, it's very easy to adapt your pages to suit your needs. Along the bottom here, I've got a number of functional tools. Uh, the first one being a selector tool. So this allows me to pick items up on the screen if I want to. I've then got a pen tool and I can select on the pen tool and change the thickness of each of these pens. So I've got a thin end and a thick end of the pen. Um, with the screen itself, you get a stylus and it's got a thin end and a thick end. And that gives me the capability of being able to manage my pen tools very quickly. So I can write up on the screen um, and I can then use the other part of the pen to underline. Uh, I can also use my fingers on the screen if I want to because it's a 20 point multi-touch screen and I can use my hand to erase should I want to at that point. We've also got the ability to remove palm rejection. So at this point I can lean on the screen so I can put my hand on the screen and I can also write on the screen as well. So one of our USPs giving you the capability to add um, or remove palm rejection at that point. So I've got that capability of being able to manage that process. You've got handwriting recognition. So again, at this point, it gives me the ability to write up something on the screen. And my handwriting, as you can tell, is not particularly useful, but it will pick up your handwriting to the best of its capability, and it will actually turn that into text for you. If you're using math tools, then again, it will allow you to work through some maths examples. And again, it allows you to pick these up and at least even work those out for you. If you want to go a little bit further in your uh, a full on maths wizard, then the ability for you to put in different types of symbols will also pick those up as well. Um, so if you're in a science environment um, or you're doing kind of some high tech or high level maths based systems, then you can work that through as well. I've got an erase button that allows me to erase my items just very quickly. And I've also got an undo and a redo at that point as well. So if I do make a mistake, I've got the ability to manage that very quickly. The bin button allows me to start afresh and, and clear everything on the screen. But again, your undo and your redo buttons will work very quickly. If I'm doing process delivery or I'm doing a sorting based environment where I need to put things in certain boxes, then again, I can bring up shapes and I can choose the color of those shapes. And it's very quick for me just to be able to add those shapes to the system should I need to. So again, it's about that ease of use and about making things nice and simple to work through. And again, I've got that ability to add as in where I see appropriate. So again, if I'm doing process delivery or I'm talking through um, how our systems might work, then I've got that capability to manage that. I've got a radar view. So if I click on the hand, what this will do is allow me to um, move my page around. So unlike a dry erase board or a flip chart where I'm restricted to the physical size of that dry erase board or my flip chart, this actually gives me the ability to have a much larger unbound workspace. And again, I can click on the hand movement and I can have a look through my page as is appropriate. So all the way through, I've got full capability of having an unbound workspace that might traditionally be um, restricted based on the size of the pages that we've got. I can import images as well if I want to. So again, from here is an image file as a PDF directly from the storage of the screen itself, either from my USB stick or my cloud drive. And if I click on my USB stick, then I can bring in files directly from here. So very quickly, I can bring in pictures and images should I want to. So I can bring in a 3D image and I can 
push that onto our screen and we can discuss that in a bit more detail. So I can pop that here. Now, as I said, because I've got an unbound workspace, what this actually allows me to do is if I just click on my hand movement again and I, I move my page out of the way, but I actually bring back my drawing, I can actually enlarge this and I can look at this in more detail as well as being able to annotate directly over the top of the image should I want to. I can then manage this space nice and easily so that I can then pinch and zoom and I can put that back to the original space where I was working in at that point. So all the way through I've got that capability of managing my workspace which traditionally if you've got a dry erase board or a flip chart would be very difficult to do at this point. From here, I can click on my little floating toolbar and I can click on the home button and that will take me through to my home space. I've got a browser and the browser gives me access to full web pages and I can add more web pages as I see appropriate. And I've got the ability to move through my Clever Touch pages as is appropriate, very easily just being able to move through with um, a touch of my finger, being able to manage my screen as I see fit. Click back on the home button. This will bring me back to my home space and then I can get access to files. So the files gives me access to the internal memory of the screen itself. As I said before, my USB stick, or if I want to, I can access my cloud drive from here as well. And again, we spoke about the fact that you can use a Google Drive or OneDrive directly from here. Alternatively, I've got my remote file here, and what this allows me to do is actually connect my screens together. So if I've got my Clever Touch screens in multiple meeting rooms or multiple training areas, I can link the screens together so that they can share resources between each other if I wanted to. I'm just going to go to my USB stick and I'm going to click on document and you can see here that I've got a variety of resources that I can use, whether that be a PDF, a Word document, a PowerPoint, an Excel spreadsheet. It will play your Microsoft native files um, directly from the screen itself without having to plug any external apps in if you don't want to. You can always install your own apps as well, so you can install the Microsoft Office apps and that will give you a cut down view should you want to. But I'm just going to play a PowerPoint presentation very quickly at this point and you'll see we've got a built-in WPS player which will allow me to open up and play my traditional files at this point. So here's my PowerPoint presentation. Again, I can zoom through my PowerPoint just by moving um, the screen to the left or to the right. Uh, and it's very simple to pick that up should I want to. Uh, if I want to annotate over the top of the screen, then I can use my annotation tools. Um, if I just uh, scroll back through to a, a page that I've got here, then very simply, I can use my annotation tools and I can open up my annotation tools to annotate directly over the screen. This is a bit like putting an acetate over the top of your screen and it gives me the ability to draw directly over to the screen. Uh, alternatively, I can highlight key areas that I might want to draw your attention to specifically at this point. I can use the QR code and using the QR code, what that will allow me to do is actually push that information out with those meeting notes directly to my uh, device that I'm using in my workspace. So in this case, I'm using an iPad. I'll just bring that up to the screen so that you can see it and it will actually push those notes that I've made directly onto my screen so I can take those notes away. So rather than having to send through a 40 page PowerPoint presentation, I can just concentrate on those uh, individual items that I've created directly itself. I've then got the ability also to have this little um, A symbol here will pick up my handwriting. So at this point, I can look to pick up my handwriting. And if I just write the word clever touch, it will attempt to pick up my handwriting. And then at this point, what I can then do is bring that up in a little view here that you'll see at this point. So again, very quickly, I can open up my Clever Touch website and again, it will attempt to pick up my handwriting as close as possible. But it actually opens up a little web page within the system. So as well as being able to view my PowerPoint, I can actually then view a little web browser in that as well. Click on my home button, take me back to my home space and we, we can start again and I can open up my files and I could open up a PDF or a PowerPoint if I wanted to at this point. Something that's really versatile and very um, uh, clever and unique within our system as well. Uh, just like when you double click on an iPad or an iPhone, if I click on my two little squares here, this will give me the ability to open up my existing app. So if I've had an app open, I can open up the app. Alternatively, and I believe this is unique, it gives me the ability to split our screen. So I can have my PowerPoint on one page and I can have my browser on another page. 
all the way through, I can still control and manage my PowerPoint presentation very easily, as well as being able to manage my experience on my web page. And it also gives me the ability, should I need to view one space more than the other, then I can change those spaces to suit the needs and very quickly I can just remove one of those should I want to. So again, it's very simple to manipulate between the files that you're using. So again, it's about that quick use and that ability to be able to manage that space very, very quickly. If I click on my apps button here, I've got access to a variety of apps. So again, I can um, install apps. As I mentioned before, I've installed uh, Zoom. I've also installed Microsoft Teams at this point, as well as um, some Office files. Again, we're not able to manage or control those third party apps, but if you want to install them and try them out, um, by all means do, you've got that functionality to be able to use that. We've also got CleverShare. CleverShare allows me the ability to share devices directly up to that screen. Whether it be an iPad, an Android device, a laptop or a PC, it's very, very simple. You download an app called CleverShare 2, um, and if you can see it here, it's this little um, app just here. It's the one with the blue square and two white squares within it. All I do, I type that number that appears on the screen, um, and that brings me into um, this open page that I've got at this point here. And if I hit desktop sync, it allows me to do a variety of things. So it will push that image of the screen directly down to my iPad. It means that if I'm in a meeting environment and I don't want to be stuck at the front of room, I can actually move around that meeting room environment. Or if I'm in a training space and I want to look at what other people are doing and how they're working, I can control the screen directly from my device. So very quickly without me having to go up to the screen, I can manage my device directly from here. So it's giving me that ability to be able to open up my files directly from here. And again, it's very, very simple to manage those if I want to. And again, I can always control the screen at the same point as well. Alternatively, I can share my device straight up to the screen. So I can screen mirror and I can mirror my device straight up to the screen at this point. So if I just come back to um, zoom a second and I um, share my screen. I'm just going to share my screen again. This is a, um, a function of Zoom. So you do have to unshare and share back again at this point. But again, if I want to share my screen or my uh, device straight up to the screen, it's very simple. Hit on Clever Share and that then pushes my device straight up to the screen. I can connect up to 50 devices simultaneously and I can have up to 50 devices um, connected and up to four devices being shown on the screen at any one point in time. This is great because it becomes a mobile visual at that mobile visualizer. So at that point, I'm able to take images of, of individual items if I want to do that um, immediately and I can push those straight up to the screen as and when it's appropriate. So the ability for me to be able to share resources, whether that be from um, a textbook, whether it be from a poster, uh, it allows me to do that very quickly. If I've got full sales team and I've got a number of my colleagues wanting to share their sales data, then again, that ability for me to be able to share those data up to the screen becomes really important and very, very quick. No need for scrabbling around for cables, trying to plug lots of individuals in at that point. And I can also talk about key things that I might want to discuss in much more detail. So the ability for me to be able to have that instant access to devices that people are using in their in their rooms are very, very quick and very, very simple. We also provide as an additional option, um, a CleverShare dongle, which works via USB-C and you can plug that straight into the screen, hit the button and it will do the same thing and plug those uh, that device straight into the, the screen as well. So that's CleverShare. Um, as a, an extra addition to, to the Clever Share, um, part of the functionality allows you to work across network as well. So you can have two different networks. You could have a guest network as well as your corporate network. And as long as the two subnets are allowed to talk to each other, you can work through Clever Share at that point as well. Moving on very quickly to our settings. Um, within settings, there's a variety of options that you can control and manage from here. Uh, if I just talk you through some of these very quickly, you've got a start up and shut down functionality. Uh, and when the meeting's finished, you've got this little dustbin at the bottom or on the right hand side. If I click that little dustbin, that will erase my session ready for the next session to start. And that will allow me to manage exactly what I remove from the system. So I can remove email accounts, cloud-based accounts, ready for the next person to join that meeting, depending on how I want to set that up. You've also got the functionality to choose your default starter. So if you do have an inbuilt PC in the system, 
I can have it so that it automatically loads straight up into my Windows based environment. Or if I'm running a video conferencing system, then I can run that through here as well and I can choose how I want to set that up directly. Again, it depends on how you want to manage that. You've also got the ability to set up um, startup and shutdown time. So if I want the screen to start up at seven in the morning, close down at seven o'clock at night, I can schedule those events as well. So for those of you that are very conscious about your green credentials, it gives you that capability to manage the power to your screens directly. Um, a couple of other little um, elements that we've got within here as well. If I just click on the input settings, I showed you before when I was in my space here in my connection where I've got lots of connectivity. If I just come to my settings again and I click on input, this will allow me to change all of those inputs. So here very quickly, if I just take out Word Lux and I put in tablet mode, so when we're referring to um, our Android base, we talk about this being our tablet mode so that we can run that nice and easily. HDMI 1, we'll call this uh, laptop because we're likely to be plugging laptops in. And then if I've got a video conferences, video conferencing system, then I can choose that here as well. The other inputs I don't want to show, so I can hide those very quickly at this point. Again, when I come back to my home space, you'll now see that in my connection, I've only got those inputs with which I can control. So there's no way of me getting access to anything else should I um, wish to. I can only access those inputs nice and easily and very quickly at that point. Um, moving forward with some of the apps again, you've got access to um, a quick start guide as well. So should you get stuck at any one point in time, you've got a quick start guide. And what this will actually allow you to do either via the Chrome browser or the browser itself, I can open that up and that will actually give you a full run through as to how to use the system. So again, it's very simple, it's very intuitive. If you do get stuck, you choose your language. You then choose the screen that you're working on. So in this case, I'm working on my UX Pro, and this will then give me an opportunity to understand exactly how to use my screen. So again, it's very simple and very intuitive to use at that point. You'll notice that I've actually added it as part of my favorites at the bottom here that you can see. Another element to our screen is our MDM. So our MDM solution allows you to manage your screens remotely. So you can set these up individually, or you can set them up in groups. You can deploy, you can dis, um, deploy startup and shutdown times. You can also deploy uh, security certificates and you can also set each screen up with individual apps should you see appropriate. So you've got a full way of managing the screens remotely. And again, everything that I've shown you there is, is free of charge. There's no ongoing annual subscriptions. It's all part of the solution that's been built into the screen directly.